So, two days ago, Ben Piri, who is a member of parliament for Tio Central constituency, was sent out of parliament for not wearing a necktie, which is apparently in violation uh, of the standing orders of the parliament. And uh, I, I bring this story here today because it's an interesting story that I've seen it happening uh, multiple times over the course of my following of Malawi politics. I think in 2020, another uh, MP was sent out of parliament for wearing a Chinese, uh, Chinese style suit, which did not include a necktie. And, uh, and uh, fast forward to 2021, when Ben Peel was sent out of parliament, I saw the same comments, for example, in, in the media groups that I'm in. Some, some people, uh, my seniors in the media profession, were like, oh no, this is, you know, just evidence that we are still under the strong grip of uh, the, the English and the colonizers. Apparently, wearing a necktie in Parliament is, you know, testament to us being still under the yoke of uh, Queen Elizabeth and his uh, subjects. And uh, another one actually posted on Twitter, and this one should be uh, uh, Idris Nasa. If you, if you know Malawian politics at all, or if you've been in Malawian media, you should know Idris Nasa. If you don't, you're just plain jealous. So he's a big guy. So he, he wrote that uh, today in Malawi, uh, this member of parliament was kicked out of parliament for breaching the dress code. He was not wearing a necktie. Malawi got his independence from Britain on 6 July 1964. You, you can see what Idris is trying to say there. He's, he's juxtaposing this uh, independence and this member of parliament being sent out of parliament today to sort of show that we are still, you know, under the strong influence of the British. But uh, I, I'm here to talk about this story specifically because I've seen it so many times and I, it pisses me off. Okay, so firstly, how long has Ben Piri been in parliament? Why has he never raised a point of order or tried to raise a motion to say, let's change the dress code? No member of parliament has ever come to parliament to say, look, we, we're still being made to wear neckties. This is reminiscent of, you know, the Brits. We are independent now and, and let's wear our own thing. If someone changes the standing orders, then the argument that they're making now would be plausible. Granted, no one has come forward to say, let's change or amend the standing orders. That means that the current rules are to be in effect until someone else changes. So it's not the, the fault of the Brits that we still follow some old uh, dress codes in Parliament. So if, if Mr. Ben Paley and his friends, who have been in Parliament for a long time, by the way, don't like the rules, they should change them. They have the power. Okay, and that's number, number one. Uh, I've, I've also heard this argument come up when a member of parliament fails to speak good English or, or write out, you know, displays serious lack of uh, 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 command of the English language. And people will come, oh no, you know, why are we laughing at this member of parliament? We should be using our own languages in parliament anyway. Okay, we can. You know, we, we can use our own languages in parliament. But can you change the rules first? The rules are there. And they have to be followed. And, uh, and uh, coming to number two, uh, what is the alternative? What is the alternative? If we're not, if we're not going to wear a jacket and ties and, 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 you know, proper dressing, what is the alternative? What is Malawian dressing? This is something many people miss to say that we used to walk around naked or we wore, you know, animal skin. So if we are not going to wear something that is not imported, what are we going to wear in Parliament? You know, people just want to wear some t-shirts, which is still a dress code and which is still a dress style that came to Malawi, you know, via ship. So we, we don't have our own Malawian style dressing. And if we do, it's imported. It's still, or, or, or people go naked. And, and it's ironic that in Malawi, when it's convenient for people, they will go against, you know, dress codes and, and all these things that they call, you know, colonial in nature. But when, when a woman, for example, walks around naked or, or has a miniskirt, you know, the whole street in Malawi can rally. And, and, and I think some women have been raped before for, for putting on pants or, or, or short skirts. So it's really ironic that 
we, 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 we don't seem to have a position. Where are we? Do we have a national dress? No. Is, can we change the rules? I keep going back to this, to this argument. And, and what is the alternative? Show us. So the whole hypocrisy about let's, let's uh, you know, speak our own languages, let's wear our own uh, uh, clothes, uh, let's do our own thing. First of all, you know, allow it. And coming back to the issue of, of, of uh, language, uh, uh, which I just uh, introduced there, if, if we go to parliament today and we say, okay, everyone is going to speak their own language, you know what they mean? is that let's speak Chichewa because if we went back to parliament tomorrow and we started speaking our own languages, for example, I speak Tumbuka, which is a language spoken by very few people in Malawi, and there are even more languages that are smaller than the language I speak. And when members of parliament, you know, come there and start, uh, and start speaking like Tumbuka, eh, mutanda urimu anyitu, indi zapano, understanding all darayani, gukumba gutimu nipeku mabuliji, mavichi, people will be like, whoa, 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 we can't understand you. The, the same people that are railing against English today will be railing against, you know, some minorities speaking their own languages. So, it, it, they just want something that's convenient to them. So, we are saying that don't don't bring your own languages to parliament unless you want everyone to speak for, for, in their own mother tongue. In in which case you would have to invest in in in, in translators, real time translators, which would be costly. So uh, if if you want to introduce something standard, why don't we use English, which we are taught from primary school to secondary school? This is the language of you know instruction so uh, anyone who comes to parliament must, must be must demonstrably be able to speak english how how big of an ask is that so it's really frustrating and it's really uh, it pisses me off when people come and 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 the likes of idris coming up you know waxing philosophical about how uh, uh, wearing a necktie is is a sign that we we still under the yokes of the brits where well, we still are under the yokes of the brits we speak english and we we we, we you know we use you know western style medicine we live in british houses now we Everything else, we live in the century of the white man. There's no way we can run away from it. After all, we don't have the alternative. I, I always, you know, find it interesting when Malawians think that we somehow have a, a, a traditional base that we can go back to in terms of philosophy, in terms of food. We don't mention any, any food that is available on a Malawian table now, and I will tell you where it's from. Cassava, you know, maize, uh, and rice. All these foods came via a boat, and and let's just use them. Let's just be humans, you know. We we we, we came to the party late. We, we our languages are you know are not that are not that intricate in in terms of talking about the modern languages, modern language of science and technology. So. And, and our dresses, our traditional dresses, are quite embarrassing because we will have to go out there dick swinging and vaginas, you know, peeping. So let's just do what we can. If we want to go casual, I think uh, I was reading, uh, was, was it reading or I was watching a documentary? In the UK, the number of, uh, the number of neckties that were being sold fell drastically, I think a, a whole 80% after dress codes were... were we're lowered in many many places. We can do that too. I, I live in China myself. Uh, things are so unofficial here. You you go to a you know a school and all the teachers are wearing like sports shoes. In fact, at the school I was teaching at, which is one of the best schools in China, the students are required to wear sports shoes over the uni uh, under their uniforms because they have to be ready to run around at any point. So yes, you, you can downgrade uh, some things. The, the formalism and the brown nosing is bad. I, I also don't like the fact that people have to go out there, have a certain hairstyle and, and behave a certain way to, to belong to a group or to be seen to be formal. And, and the, but at the same time, uh, you, you have to go 
in, in layers, you have to go in layers. Yes, formalism is bad, but what is alternative? Again, I ask you. And, and that is just something I wanted to uh, discuss today. And uh, if, if you look at uh, Mr. Ben P, what he wore, it was outrageous, actually. He, he looked like he was going to play in a mariachi band. Oh, he actually looked like some pimp, you know. He, he had a jacket and uh, a shirt with the collars uh, going up like it was like a turtleneck. And then inside there was something else. And his, his jacket has a, a flow structure uh, in the pockets, looking like he was going to a wedding, something like he was going to a performance of something. So it, it was an ugly look, and even if it was not against the parliamentary standing orders, I think the fashion department of the parliament should have sent him out anyway for, for looking, for looking uh, uh, very ugly that day. So this is what I just wanted to say. Yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't have to be formal about many of these things. We can do so much more by just doing the act job. You know, I, I, I used to be... In school, for example, when I was at Nsuzi University, we used to have these student assemblies and the, the, the rule was that you could not wear a hat. You, you were sitting in the crowd and it was like, oh, take off your hat, you know, and, and some, some teachers hated necklaces and, and bangles and, and all that time, I, I, when, I, when I was in, at, at Livingstone uh, Secondary School, my brother was sent home to shave and he shaved a clean cut. He, he looked like a Shaolin guy. So they sent him back because they, they wanted the hair to grow back up so that he, he can have that, you know, sweet level that they wanted. The formalism is disgusting. The, the, the way some people focus on, on these issues, you know, like Univers University of Livingstonia, the last time I checked, they didn't allow uh, their workers working at the mission from, we from wearing you know, like trousers and pants. And, and the list just keeps Go, going on and, and it's ridiculous how people are so rooted in the formalism you know and and the the, the rituals that 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 hang over our heads from 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 the past yes I understand that and I hate it too but you know when, when it comes to places like Parliament when it comes to places uh, to issues like uh, the language we should use we should consider the fact that we need we, we don't have alternatives and the alternatives that that are there might be as oppressive as the language that we rail against. So um, this is just my, my, my two question, my two question uh, uh, input on, on this topic, which is a very important topic. I hope that next time w when, when a member of parliament is sent out of parliament, people think about the implications of just saying, oh, it, it, it's smacking, you know, uh, colonial uh, uh, colors. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what I wanted to do. Uh, see you in another video.